Hello, and welcome to this brand new Blender Smoothie tutorial. This is Ben Amond, and today we're going to be looking at creating a rock in Blender using the built-in textures with the Cycles shader system. So, the reason I'm doing this is, uh, well, there are two reasons. One reason is it's yet another tutorial involving Cycles shaders that really helps you get a better understanding of how the textures work and how they interact with the rest of the shaders and everything like that. Um, so it's really valuable in that sense. Uh, the other reason is I was actually working on a tutorial series and hoping that I would have that completed by this week, uh, and I didn't. So that's going to have to wait until next week. So this is sort of also a placeholder tutorial until then. Um, but I don't want to call it that because it does have some educational value to it. So hopefully that'll be finished by then, and in the meantime we can get started on this. So I'm going to start by deleting this lamp because we don't need that for anything. Uh, we'll be adding our own, and I'm going to delete the cube too. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create, of course, a basic rock shape. The easiest way to do that is to just add an icosphere. And down here we'll increase the subdivisions to maybe three will probably be good enough. Because we just want to get a basic shape in here. And then we can add some displacement later. So I'm just going to click Smooth Shading. And I am going to come over here and add a subsurf modifier to really smooth that out even more bring up the view levels to 2 as well, and turn on optimal display, just to speed that up a bit more. Alright, um, so the next thing we want to do is press tab to go into edit mode, and I'm just going to right click this bottom vertex here to select it, and I'm going to press O to turn on proportional editing. And what that does is if I press G to sort of move this around, then you'll see this, there's this big circle that's around the vertex that we selected and that there are certain vertices within that circle that are sort of moving around with this circle. So that's all that that does, is the proportional editing tool allows you to move around multiple vertices um, along with a single one or a couple ones like that. So that if we just move the single one, then most of the lower half of the icosphere moves along with it. So I'm going to scroll out with my mouse wheel to make that circle bigger. A little bit more, a little bit more. All right until we have it so that we can just sort of bring this vertex up to the top so that it's resting on the x-axis. And we've got a shape sort of like that. Um, so that doesn't look very much like a rock still, of course. So the next thing we want to do is we want to just select random vertices, essentially. Kind of scroll in and out with your mouse wheel to, to adjust the size. And just sort of give this a little uh, deformation. And we're just sort of pushing and pulling this around. It doesn't have to be precise. Just try to make it look as random as possible. Maybe we can go up in the top view and kind of push around these a little more. It's still a little too... There we go. More like that. And that's probably good enough. It doesn't have to be... Uh, there doesn't have to be too much of this going on because we're going to add a displacement modifier too. Something else that I might do is actually kind of move this back down, something like that. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is add a displacement modifier really quickly. So it's just under modifier, this third column there, displace. Oops, did not, not mean to add another one. And uh, just click new next to the texture, and that'll just add a new texture, and that's good enough. We can just adjust the strength from here to maybe 0.1. That's actually pretty good. Um, maybe 0.0. And Eight. Lower it a tiny bit, but that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so that works out pretty well. And that's really all we're going to have to do with, yeah, with the actual uh, displacement part of this. I'm actually going to come back in here and uh, see if I can't sort of scale this down a bit more. I'm just sort of selecting some of the vertices in the bottom of this and seeing if I can kind of flatten that a little more. All right, that's pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to press Control alt 0 right now with my view in front view, so that's sort of right in front of this rock. And I'm going to press G and click the middle mouse button to sort of move out the camera a bit more. And I'm going to press Shift A and add a plane. We'll sort of scale that out a bit so that there's some kind of ground plane there that we can work with. And I'm going to press Shift A and add another plane, and this one will be our sun lamp. So I'm just going to press G and move that all the way over here. Probably somewhere like that. Maybe scale that down a bit. I'm going to save this before we go any farther. We'll just name it Rock. 
And I'm going to go into my rendered view here. Let's go ahead and come over here. Add a new shader for our sun lamp. Change this from diffuse to emission. Adjust the color a little bit. Bring that all the way up. Whoa. Bring that color all the way up to white and give this a bit of a yellow tint there too. So just just like that. Alright, and we'll probably have to bring up the strength to something insanely high, like 2,500. Uh, that's pretty good. Could do a little better than that though. We'll try 3,500. Maybe even 5,000. Probably work. Alright, that's pretty good. We, we want it to be really bright because it is the sun, but we don't want it to be so bright that there are overexposed parts of the mesh. And it looks like we've got some weird triangle shapes over here. So I'm going to maybe add another subsurf modifier after the displacement one. And I'll turn down the render levels to one there. Turn on optimal display again. Okay. So that's a pretty good shape for the rock. We could always adjust it later if we had to. Um, so the rest of this is just shaders. So from this point on, we just want to sort of split the view here, by clicking those diagonal lines at the top and dragging down. All right, this is really running slowly. Try not to use the video card though, because sometimes it messes up the tutorial. So I'm going to switch this uh, window to the node editor, and I'm actually going to click on the world options first, click use nodes, and I'm going to press shift A and we'll add a sky texture. We need something else in the back there to sort of fill that in. All right, and that looks much better. And then we can sort of adjust sort of the time of day by clicking and dragging this white part of the sphere to kind of match where our sun is coming from a little bit more. Something like that, just to make it a little bit more realistic. Okay, um, so now we can go back to the object material nodes just by clicking on that orange cube there and add a new material and we'll name this rock. Alright, so the very first thing we want to do is we want to make this a little darker because I don't want it quite that bright because it's sort of a darker rock like that. And once you've done that, the very first thing you want to do is give it some sort of baseline displacement. So to do that we're just going to add a noise texture, bring up the detail all the way up to 16 and I'm just going to plug that into the displacement option. All right, and we also want to have, right now it's just pretty, it's spread pretty uniformly. Um, we want this to be more broken up. What makes it really look realistic is if there are some smoother parts, and some rougher parts. So to take care of that, we can press Shift A and add an RGB curves node. And what we can do here is just sort of click and drag at one point on the line there to form a curve, and then click and drag down here to form another point, form sort of that S-curve type shape. And what this does is we're adding a lot of contrast to the image by doing this. So basically, the closer we get to one side of the image, or to one side of this node here, like say the closer we get to the left side, let me demonstrate this, then it looks like, yeah, the less rough areas we'll have. And the closer we get to the right side, the more rough areas we'll have. Um, so we, we sort of want to... Actually, it looks like um, it has more to do with how far apart they're spread than what side they're on. But either way, we just sort of want to keep it somewhere around the middle and just kind of push these closer and closer together until we get a result that we're happy with. So just sort of keep bringing those in. And you can see already that there are some smooth spots there and some rough spots there, and that really helps sell the effect. Um, Okay, so that's that's pretty good for a sort of baseline displacement. I'm going to bring this down so we have more space up here. Um, yeah, so we might want to sort of adjust the strength of that a little bit later. So I'm going to press Shift A and add a converter math node. Change that from add to multiply so that now whenever we adjust this factor down here, it adjusts the level of our displacement. So zero, there's no bump mapping. One, there's a lot of bump mapping. You can even go above one to something crazy like five or higher. For now, we'll keep it at like point, let's say point six five, because it seems like a pretty good value. We want it to be pretty strong, because this is going to be the majority of our displacement. All right. Um, 
So the next thing we want to do, maybe we'll add a little bit of color variation to this. So I'm just going to duplicate this node here, Shift D, and I'm going to add a mix shader, sort of combine those, and I'm going to make one of these a lot darker than the other. And then I'm going to duplicate this noise texture, and we don't need that RGB curves texture, we'll just drop that in there. And I'm going to adjust the size to like 8. And the reason I'm adding a new texture in that case is because I don't want this uh, color variation to correspond exactly with the rough and smooth spots of the rock, which is what would happen if we kept all the values the same. So I'm actually going to give it a little bit of distortion too, maybe 0.25. And yeah, a scale of 8 is probably pretty good. I might make this a little brighter, maybe make this a little darker. And it's, it's kind of hard to see it, because we don't have an RGB curves node or anything to bring up the contrast in this texture, but there is a little bit of color variation, and that really helps a lot. Might make this even a little brighter than it is there. All right, so something else that really helps sell the effect is to have sort of a, a very fine bump mapping, especially if there's a little bit of uh, whiteness on the edges of that to make it look like it's sort of brushed up against other things and it's sort of worn down a little bit on those sides so it's not quite as dark. Um, so basically the way we want to do this is we want to add another texture. So I'm going to press Shift A and add texture. And we'll add a Veroni texture. Now this sort of looks like if I just plug this straight into that node right there, you can see it's sort of divided it up into these cells almost. Um, so if I sort of adjust that scale and maybe make it more like 50, Maybe more like a hundred. We want to get the size right, so I'm going to say maybe about 125. It'll probably work. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe even 135. All right, and basically what we're doing is we're just trying to get these little, these little craters small enough that they're more like a fine bump mapping surface instead. And of course, it looks really terrible now because we don't have any of the other displacement, and so it looks really flat, especially because of these weird shadows over here. Uh, but the way we basically combine these, these two uh, different types of displacement is just by pressing Shift A and adding a mix RGB node and sort of plugging both of these into those inputs. And the lower we set this, the less of the Veroni bump we'll have. And we really don't want much of that, so I'm going to set this pretty low to maybe, maybe not even 0.1. Yeah, I might try like 0 0.075 instead. So yeah, the lower we set that mix value on this mix node, then the lesser the intensity of that Veroni texture we just added. And then the higher we set it, then the more intense it gets, and the less of the initial uh, bump mapping we see. So we want something like that. And this time we're going to add, we're going to mix up some colors again. So I'm going to mix this with another diffuse shader. This time we're going to make this pretty bright, like really bright, like all the way up there. And when we're mixing these, we do want these to correspond actually with the Veroni texture. Because like I said, we want sort of, let's see if that's the way we want it. Yeah, so we can sort of see, it's probably hard to see with the size of the rock in comparison to the size of the video. But basically we have sort of a lattice of the lighter rock and then the darker rock is filling in the holes in between the lattice. And that's exactly what we want in this case, because like I said, I sort of want it to look like there's maybe a little bit of uh, wear and tear around that, around those parts that have the Veroni texture. Um, and it helps sell the realism a little bit more to sort of have the white on the outside and then the darker areas and sort of on the inside. Um, but that's too intense, the way we have it right now. We don't want it to be that noticeable, so I'm going to duplicate this mix shader and mix this result with our initial shader before we added the Veroni texture. And now we can sort of tweak this a bit more. You know, we could also add another noise texture, maybe duplicate that, and adjust the size to like, I don't know, 10. Plug that into the factor, so that then we have some areas that have it and some areas that don't. And, yeah, that really helps. All right. And then maybe we'll add, maybe we will add a, an RGB curves node just to sort of mess with that a little bit more. Um, 
All right, that's probably a little too much. So we can sort of spread these apart a little bit more. And again, what we're doing is we're adjusting the contrast here. So since we're using a noise texture to mix this shader with the Veroni shader, is essentially we're just deciding what areas have that white lattice part and what areas don't. So the closer these points are together, then the sharper the contrast between those regions will be. So we don't want them to be too close together, maybe something more like that. And that looks pretty good. So there's really at this point only maybe one or two other things that you might do to sort of enhance the realism. Uh, one of those things is you might add another mix shader and kind of combine this with another diffuse shader and maybe get a dirt color sort of going in here because we can sort of make it look like we've got some dirt on the rock um, especially if we we can use the same texture in this case for this kind of combine those um, so that looks pretty good we will want a little less dirt than that though so maybe I could bring that over a little more something more like that all right and that looks pretty good just to have a little bit of dirt on the rock like that it helps a lot um, and that's really pretty much it something else I might do is maybe try to add a little bit more displacement to it I'm gonna make this a little darker I think because it's a little too bright taste all right um, as I add a I believe it was a moose grave texture and if I can just sort of plug that whoa no, no, no. Bring that back up to whatever it was at before, I think 0.65. Um, if I just sort of plug this into that value there, you'll see it looks pretty terrible. I'm going to bring up the detail again all the way up to what it's typically at. Um, but I'm going to change this from its default option, which is like FBM, I think, to ridged multifractal. And then I'm going to bring up the scale to something like 50 so that we can start seeing it. And now we can see this sort of interesting effect going on there. Maybe I'll bring up the lacunarity a bit and that just sort of helps with the crater-like shapes you might be able to get from it. Um, so that's pretty good. Maybe I'll try 35 instead. Maybe 40. Something like that. Um, this will just add even more displacement, which helps sell the effect even more. So I'm just going to mix these two together again by using a mix RGB node. Oops, we want that in the first input. That in the second, just so we can keep it all very consistent. And we'll make the mix factor, I don't know, maybe something like 0.2. We don't want it to be too noticeable because then you get these weird patterns and it doesn't look quite right. But something more subtle like that works really well. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, as far as creating a rock with just the built-in textures goes. Um, obviously, you're likely to get a more realistic result if you use a photo texture of a rock. Uh, but sometimes it's a really fun exercise to do something like this, and it might work. It might work a little bit more with uh, different styles of animations and renders and whatnot. Um, so I hope you learned a lot from this, especially on hopefully using displacement and mixing those and uh, working with the shaders in that sense. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial series, which is going to be. A really fun one, and hopefully not too many parts, because I want to try to make it as short as possible. Uh, but I hope you enjoy that too when it comes around next week. So thanks for watching, and see you then.